Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Back again. This time we're going to work on a classic. This is a Hedden 222. And uh, this one is interesting. It's made in the 70s, I'm sure. It says, assembled in the U.S. by Daisy Hedden, parts made in Japan. Um, a lot of manufacturers were apologetic for moving offshore in that uh, period of time. And uh, a lot of them tried to reassure everybody that American manufacturing jobs were staying here. Well, <laughs> we kind of follow the story there, don't we? Interestingly enough, I just saw a commercial for the uh, Jeep um, Grand Wagoneer, and it basically said assembled in Michigan from foreign parts on the commercial. Go figure. So I guess that's still around today to some extent. All right. Well, we're going to take this apart. We'll show you how the reel is made. We'll service it. It came in from a customer, and uh, it seems to be running just fine. The only issue I think you would have with the reel is you have a slight chip in the um, in the reel seat it should be rounded up and like it is up top here but it's chipped down below here um, not only matters if you're a collector if you're fishing it and you can get that arm into the um, uh, the rod then go ahead and take it fishing and I think that's probably what this is all about taking it fishing don't know the story there would probably like to know that story more but uh, I'm not worried about it one way or another and uh, the reel seems to be performing well. So this is uh, another nice example of a spinning reel made in the 70s in Japan. Uh, Daiwa was making them. You had um, a lot of different manufacturers out there. Daiwa made them for Sears. Uh, Omori made them and a couple of other ones uh, as well. Not quite sure where this one was made, but I'm sure once we get inside, you'll have some of the telltale signs of that. So we're going to get started by removing the exterior pieces and parts. And as we do, I want to take a moment to thank our first responders and essential personnel, everybody involved in keeping us safe during the pandemic. Your efforts truly are appreciated. You know, I was having trouble with this button trying to figure this one out. <laughs> I think we figured it out. When the last time this one was off, this came out and was resting on top of that uh, a little finger clip in there that holds the drag stack in. Looks like these are cork wash washers while I'm looking at it. That's kind of interesting. I'm just going to put that off to the side. I, for whatever reason, my routines are always that I service the drags last. You can service them in any order you like. While we're at it, uh, routine, I like to put a um, protective glove on my non-dominant hand, which is my left hand. And I like to do that because it keeps creases and oils and that off of my hand and I was working on a reel previously you can see that uh, uh, I've got some greases and oils on there and that's protected me along the way. Alright, I'm going to take the handle off while I can. That just simply screws off and then we'll take the side plate off on this. So I was just talking to a fellow Michael. Uh, he uh, had some nice stories to tell me of the Hedden Museum and the Hedden Museum is is a fishing museum. It's located in, I'll get this uh, wrong for sure, I'm going to say Dewojiak, uh, Michigan. And for those of you like me who are wondering where that is, well, if uh, you triangulate or maybe draw a wiggly line between South Bend, Indiana and Kalamazoo, Michigan, on the eastern side of Lake Michigan, well, that's where you're going to find it. And uh, that's where uh, hidden was set up and now there's a museum there in the former plant. Well, you can see that the only issue with this reel is it, well, hasn't been worked on in a while. That's some pretty dried out grease in there and yet it's still kind of cranking smoothly. What I like to do when I service a reel like this is I like to put the drag anti-reverse into an a, uh, off position. That way when I remove that main gear it's not going to interfere with it in any way. We're going to pull the pin for that. That's a pin that's holding the crosswind block onto the uh, uh, axle shaft. And uh, when I pull those small pieces and parts, I like to put them into a parts tray. In this case, that parts tray happens to be uh, at the bottom of a fast food uh, container. Should be able to remove the axle shaft now. Once the axle shaft is out, I can remove the crosswind block for cleaning. I'm going to leave that right there on the table. What I can't do now is I can't remove the main gear without removing the um, the rotor. So to do that, I'm going to need a, a deep socket here. I'm just looking for my, my little 12 millimeter because that may be a 12 millimeter one. It is. 
So this is a 12 millimeter tool. It's nothing more than a deep socket that has a, a metal rod going through it. This happens to be a tool that was used for Mitchell reels. And uh, I just keep it on my desk because it's convenient. It's also very effective as a tool. Uh, if you don't have that, go into your, uh, your socket tray and uh, go get a, a, a 12 millimeter socket. And that'll enable you to remove the nut. The nut did come off in the standard uh, counterclockwise method uh, or lefty-loosey for those that well, haven't seen a clock in a while. All right, we should be able to remove the rotor now. And when I remove the rotor, I notice there's a whole host of greases and the like in here. So I'm just going to take the opportunity right now to clean it. I'm going to use a penetrating oil as the cleaner, and I'm going to use a cotton swab to kind of mop it out. Especially on uh, these vintage reels, you don't want to get any more aggressive than you need to be in cleaning. You don't want to scrape up something if it, uh, if it matters. As a family heirloom of that, why, why ruin the paint in that if you don't need to? I did test this before the bail and everything is working fine. I'm going to oil the trip lever right now. I'm going to oil the seams for the bail. And I'm going to just let all of that sit and penetrate over to the side there. Okay, we have what I believe we will be able to do now after we move that little collar is to push the bearing through to remove the uh, bushing, uh, the pinion gear, not the bearing. I was thinking I had a bearing in here, but I do not have a bearing in this case. And now I should be able to push the main gear out this way. Just take your time. We know from seeing here that there's a lot of dried grease in this reel, so don't, don't get aggressive and try to push things. Just take it easy. Pop it up. I use the Phillips head screw driver there to just kind of poke it through there. And now we have that removed. So a fairly simple reel. No ball bearings. The case acts as a bushing. It's still operating very smoothly. You can see that uh, it hasn't been oiled in a while and that the grease is old. That's nobody's uh, problem. Just use a penetrating oil to loosen some of that old grease. Go ahead and again, use the, what you can with the least aggressive of your cleaners that are available. Look at that, it just comes off in chunks. That's been here a while. And I imagine this one's probably been in storage. I uh, didn't get the full story. but. Uh, so back to the uh, Hedden Museum. Mike said that it was, uh, I believe, Hedden closed in the 1990s. And uh, two of the former employees, I think, actually opened up the museum. And he said it's a, it's a nice day trip if you have the opportunity to be out there. And it's a good opportunity to see uh, not only the manufacturing uh, pieces, but the, the history of the company and the products it produced and so on. Well, it was Daisy Hedden. And uh, some of us remember Daisy from the BB guns. <laughs> At least I do. And uh, so it had kind of a hunting component and a fishing component. Not that a BB gun was going to do anything. But that's, uh, that's kind of the manufacturing prowess behind them. I'm going to just take the crosswind block. Now we're going to do the same. So a fairly uncomplicated reel. And People ask me what reels do I like. Well, I like the uncomplicated ones. I think that there's something to be said about simplicity in design and manufacture. Now, I'm sure Armando, if he's watching this, is going to tell me it needs a whole lot more ball bearings. Well, that's an inside joke, but we get it. Sometimes reels are over-engineered. I'll put this reel up against uh, the modern reels, and this has got... Uh, zero ball bearings in. All right, we're just going to clean up the shaft here. This was a little sticky coming out, so I'm going to just grab some steel wool just to wipe it down, give it a little bit of a buffing. It's more of a polish than a cleaning at this point with that. And then it seems to be a little bit that is on the rim here, so we're just going to do a light scrape there. It's not going to affect anything. That's probably how the wheel was sitting in storage. And just kind of locked up as the stuff dried. All right, well, we did a nice job. All of the uh, teeth in the reel, which 
Our main gear is uh, symmetrical. They're not chipped, broken, cracked, or otherwise. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put some, some grease on. I'm going to use a fishing reel grease. I'm going to use Penn's Precision Reel Grease. Of course, it doesn't matter which fishing reel grease you use on a reel. Manufacturers will tell you to use theirs because they want to sell you some more. But quite honestly, any fishing reel grease will do. Before installing the main gear, make sure that that dog is in the off position. Take your oil and just give that a little squirt there to make sure that the stud is nice and uh, lubricated. Get a little bit of grease onto the shaft of the main gear. Go ahead and place that in there then. And take your time with these. Next up then would be our pinion gear and I think if I remember I'm gonna have to slide this over the top here. There's a, a washer for that pinion gear. I think it actually you have to line it up like this. Because if you try and put it on the pinion gear, you're not gonna clear the teeth in the main gear. There we go. And there's the washer that belongs on the top side. We can grab our rotor, install that. There's a keyway in that uh, rotor. Make sure that it's in the slot or the indentation in that uh, that rotor. All right. We can hand tighten that first. Then we can grab our socket to tighten it the rest of the way. You can give it a spin at this point if you like, just to make sure everything's turning properly, which it is. Next up is to set the cross wind block. We've just cleaned it and put some grease in there. Just loaded my handle on to make it easier to turn. Notice that the point went down. If you didn't pay attention to that earlier, the point goes down. There's two sides of that cross wind block. It's easy to, to flip it around the wrong way. I'm going to put a little bit of grease onto the axle shaft. Don't overload the, the shaft with grease. Only, it'll only squeeze out of the top here. Get the orientation for that hole in the shaft. I'm going to line that up with the hole in the bottom of the cross wind block. And you want to make sure that the axle shaft travels through the bottom of the uh, the reel here. Then you can insert the pin that we saw when we took this apart. And now's a good time to give it a test, make sure everything's operating smoothly. And it certainly is. All right. Well, at this point, we only have to put the cover on and take a look at those drag washers up top. So let's start with the cover. And this is a little bit of stuff on here. So I'm just going to use a quick squirt of a rod and reel cleaner. And a little kitchen scrubby pad. And I, these things come in like six inch squares or whatever. Just I just take a little section of it off. There you go. The edge is good. Everything inside is good. Relatively simple reel, but uh, one that's certainly going to have the opportunity to go fishing again, and one that I'm sure is going to land a lot of fish before it's ready for retirement. Just finished tightening up the last of the screws now, and we'll go up top to that drag washer stack and see what we have there. Nice reel. Alright, here's the top stack. We noticed that this one seemed to have been out of position. I'm not sure if that can slip underneath. doesn't matter. There's a spring clip that's held into a groove here, so let's get that clip out. Okay, I've started to remove the drag stack now. There's two cork washers and a metal washer. I just want to remove that so I can clean any dirt and debris from the channel where they rest. And I can simply reinstall. These are cork washers, but they've got some oil on them. That's a surprise. Everything else has been dry in this reel. Probably from when I've been spraying down the cleaners. And that's good because you should have uh, oil on those to, to keep them flexible. They are permeable material, so you do want to make sure that, that they stay um, lubricated. All right, we just put the button back on now. Yeah, that's what happened. That metal washer came out 
uh, last time somebody was working on this. Now the drag adjuster knob is, is a whole lot more in position. All right, just making sure that it tightens down. It does. Now I'm going to back it off a little bit. I don't want to compress those drag washers unless they're being used. So that's how you service the Hedden 222 uh, vintage fishing reel. Oh, what a beautiful little reel. Got the, got the reverse on. It's doing what it should be doing. And uh, that's a classic. So, it, everybody, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. If you're a first responder or essential personnel, thank you again for all that you're doing during the pandemic. And to everybody, please have a great day. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.